Hey everyone, we're back. We are. And exclamation point. As I wake up, I look around and find myself in the lab. Not in the middle of the city. There's no dragon to be found. It's the middle of the day, but I guess I must have nodded off. So, oh, Myri this time will be played by someone who will not be re- reciting her lines. <laughs> oh, sorry. I zoned out there for a minute. I forgot what I was doing. <laughs> I'm, did you forget what we did? We literally just sat down and said, okay, are we ready to record? Yeah, okay, well, I'm ready, SK. And then I was like, okay, I'm hitting the recording button. And then you're like, okay, I got it. And then I hit the record button. And now here we are. I see. And I'm saying everything. Thank you for recounting the events of today to me. You're welcome. Okarin, did you have a bad dream? Are you okay? Oh, Mayuri, I didn't realize you were here. Yeah, Mayushi was planning on studying. Huh, that's right. She mentioned something about schoolwork before. Well, that's gotta be one hell of a nap if you didn't even wake up when we got here. He's right. The fact that I didn't even notice someone as big as Daru come in means I must have been in a pretty deep sleep. Oh, Karin, you're all sweaty. Did you have a nightmare? No, it wasn't a nightmare, but I did dream about Fafnir. Fafunit. Close enough. It's called Fafnir. Didn't I explain this earlier? It's the d- name of the dragon I saw. Wait, you gotta be messing with us. You're still talking about that BS. Daru looks like he's given up on me. Which, to be honest, fair. Look, you're free to ramble about whatever made-up crap you want, but there's a limit to how much even we can take. Is there, though? I told you, I'm not making it up. I really did see it. So you say, but did anybody else see this dragon of yours? Uh, well, uh, I'm not sure how to respond. Uh, I can see because I'm the chosen one. I even have proof. Proof? Yes! I tell them both about the old scroll we found at Lukaku's place politely listen, but the expressions on their face after I finish speak volumes. Oh, come on! What's with those faces? I'm not lying! There really was an old scroll! Uh, well, something about it still seems fishy. Like, everything in that scroll you're talking about sounds super suspicious. It does seem super suspicious, but that doesn't mean it's not real! Ugh. Judging by that reaction, I'd say we're on the same page. Yeah, he's right. I have my suspicions. Plus, you've only actually seen the dragon once, right? Yeah, but... What if you were just daydreaming? Maybe you were seeing things. Uh, A daydream? Is that possible? Was it just a dream like that one I had earlier? Uh, No, no, that can't be. That was no dream. Can you really say that for sure? Uh, I'm once again speechless. At the time, it felt so real. It felt too real to be a dream, but... Thinking about it now, is that still the case? Can I remember exactly what the beast looked like even now? No, I can't. It'd be one thing if it just popped up right now, but all I have are my memories of the past. They're vague. They're sparse. They're blurry. Did it really happen? I'm not so sure anymore. Once something becomes a memory, the details start to become hazy. Anyway, I feel bad for poor Luca, she... Especially if she's got to tag along with your dumb crap. I think uh, she might be enjoying it more than you give her credit for. I see. Daru, you bastard, mouthing off about Luca and I without knowing a damn thing. Mayuri, what about you? You believe me, right? I desperately look toward Mayuri, hoping for the best. Mayuri is spacing out when I call to her, but she quickly snaps into a smile. If the dragon really exists, Mayushi wants to see it. Damn it. It's not the reply I was looking for. But to be honest, Mayushi wishes you would focus more on Lukakun, not the dragon. <sighs> yeah, you're right. With our conversation over, I head outside to find Suzuha and Nai staring up at the sky together. Just as I'm about to question their sanity, I realize something. Could they be... Wait, do you guys see the dragon? Huh? Oh, hey, uh, Okabe Rintaro. Hello there, Amane Suzaha. Who somehow addressed me only by my full name. What's up? The two of them cautiously turn around, but once they realize it's me, they relax for a moment before quizzically speaking to me. Dragon? What dragon? Huh. Since you girls were looking up into the sky, I figured you could see it. We were looking at a cloud, right, Nai? 
Yeah, look, it looks just like a panda. I look at the cluster of white clouds. How absurd. They're just clouds. Pandas are pandas because they're black and white. Without the black, they're just bears. Huh. Must be nice, must be nice to be so carefree. Especially when the city is on the verge of being razed to the ground. Huh? Raised to the ground? Uncle Okarin, are you going to become a pyromaniac? Don't. Lighting things on fire is bad. Who taught you that word? How could you possibly think I'm a pyro? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, uh. Hey, cool it. What are you doing yelling a little kid? Immature much? Not you two. You saw how this entire thing went. <laughs> how am I at fault here? <sighs> I treat children the same way I treat everyone else. Really poor. With me. disdain. In this world, all are equal, save for myself. Blame Sister Braun for acting weird. What are you talking about? You're the one being weird. I am always weird. Since when? You were literally just talking about a dragon. No, you were. There's nothing weird about that. There really is a dragon. I cowardly behind Suzuha as I explain the current situation. Um, Suzuha, is Uncle Okarin telling the truth? Is the dragon going to come and burn everything away? Don't worry your cute little head, Nai. That's never going to happen. How can you say that for certain? Never say never, part-time warrior. As long as something hasn't been observed yet, there's a higher than 0% chance it could happen. As long as the chance is greater than zero, a miracle will surely occur. <laughs> you sure about that? <laughs> you sure that's a fact? <laughs> Regardless of how absurd that thing might sound. That might be true, but I highly doubt a dragon is just going to appear out of nowhere. If something like that had ever happened, there'd be some kind of record of it. Didn't I just explain myself? I'm the only one that can see it right now. And I'm telling you, it's coming. Jeez, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the future. The future? Ah, uh, either way, it's never going to happen. So don't worry, <laughs> Nye. <laughs> I see we're playing fast and loose with that in, the, in this time version of events, huh? Yeah, you're right. There's no way dragons are real. And just like that, her worries are gone with the wind. Nye's innocent smile returns as she responds to Suzuha. Eh, this is why I hate children so much. <sighs> Whatever, well, don't expect any help from me when the time comes. Aren't you the one who's gonna need help pretty soon? Me? Why? Well, the boss man's gonna be back, and if he sees you filling Nye's head with your craziness... Uh, uh, <laughs> look at the time. Would you look at my wrist? I have to go to train to defeat the dragon. Sorry, but I'm in a bit of a hurry. Farewell. Nye, go read about astrophysics or something. <laughs> Damn it. Why am I always the one running away like this? I was just trying to tell them the truth. They're gonna regret it when this dragon finally appears. One day. I wonder if it'll really come. No, I have to believe in myself. It will appear. Most likely. Probably? I glanced down at my wrist. Normally I'd be practicing over at Lukako's place by now. Should hurry up and make my way to the shrine. I should also really get a watch. One regular hot coffee, nya. Coming right up, nyan nyan. I sink into my chair after making my order. I ended up not going to the shrine. I'm just not feeling up for it today. What Lukako said to me yesterday, what Kurusu and Mayuri said to me, but their, their words still weigh heavily on my heart. Kyoma-san, you regret becoming my boyfriend, right? Am I wrong? We're flashing back to this again. How can I regret something that I don't even remember doing? The flashback budget was really limited. Is it really limited? Seems like we're doing a lot of them. It's the same one. Oh, okay. If I regret anything, it's that I sent the email that created this whole mess. Nonetheless, Kurisu said that I needed to take responsibility for my actions, yet here I am, unable to give Lukako a proper answer. I just don't have the confidence or strength of mind to see her right now. Never mind focus on training. Not to mention... Sorry to keep you waiting, Nyan. One hot coffee, black. Ferris, do you believe that dragons exist? <gasps> dragons! Yeah, if I told you a dragon was going to appear in our world, would you believe me? Oh, Kyoma, you big silly. Dragons are totally real, Nya. Uh, wait, did you see it? I'm completely taken aback. I never would have guessed that I had an ally so close to me. See it? Come on, Kyoma, that's Ferris's dragon, Nya. What? I've been keeping it a secret all this time, but that's my pet dragon, Nya. Its name is Leviathan. 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 
The cute. We first met fish. over ten years ago. <laughs> yep. Fine. Whatever. Oh, come on! I'm not finished yet. Can't get me started like that, and then just that. <laughs> I was an idiot for falling for that. Huh? Wait a sec. Were you, why were you being serious? Kyoma, yeah. I'm always being serious. <laughs> That's rich coming from you, Kyoma. Shh, I'm not joking around. Ah! I should maybe not hold the controller in this manner. There, I'll hold it like this. Nope, that's not helping. That's not... That's not help. Nope. Nope. There it is. Nailed it. So it's the Geon, yeah? A dragon or something, right? You're really holding that controller in your hand kind of weirdly. <laughs> if I told you a dragon was going to appear in Akihabara, would you believe me? Nope. A lightning fast reply. I mean, it'd be cool if something like that happened, but that'd be impossible, Nya. What if I told you there was someone who saw it with their own two eyes? <gasps> I'd say they were either dreaming or delusional, Nya. I mean, you asked for a bit of candor from me, so here we are. <laughs> uh, I'm being honest and, instead of chuny. This what you wanted? <laughs> this is what our friendship's come to. <laughs> I hope you enjoy breaking the sacred bond of trust we've had for so long. <laughs> this is what you get for breaking kayfabe, of Kyoma. <laughs> <laughs> I was a fool for thinking Ferris would be able to understand me. She says a lot of outlandish things, sure, but she's a realist at heart. And plus, if there were people who saw a dragon, this place would be going crazy, yeah? But nothing like that has happened. At all? At all. I see. Boo doo 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 been obvious since the start a dragon a door to a parallel universe it's all absurd <sighs> only the chosen one can see it absolutely ridiculous now even i'm beginning to think this is all crazy i guess i just wanted to believe that it was all real to believe only i could see it that i was the chosen one that's what i was fighting to protect the that i was fighting to protect the world <sighs> what a noble cause that's only the case if the force you're fighting with actually exists. Otherwise, it's just a dumb joke. Dara was right. Finding that old scroll was just a happy coincidence. How would any of those training exercises ever help us slay a dragon? It's all nonsense. Absurdities. That's enough of this. Joke is over. Everyone is right. It must have been daydreaming or delusional. What's the point in continuing with this madness? I look up at the red sky. <sighs> Crap, I never told her Luca go I wasn't coming today. But it's already late. There's no way she's still waiting for me. If she was waiting for me to show up, she would have emailed me ages ago. Considering I haven't heard from her all day, I doubt it's a problem. Plus, Luca go was the one who wanted to wrap things up early yesterday. Maybe she's had enough of this dumb game, too. Maybe she's just too shy to say it out loud. <sighs> yeah, that's definitely it. But she's feeling relieved right about now. No curse who's worried about her, but it's entirely possible sh that she's just totally done with me. I mean, think about it. This is Lukako. If I suddenly stopped showing up for our everyday training, she'd normally panic and try to get in touch with me, but if she's done with me, we're just going back to normal. That's... that's all. Might be awkward for a little while, but time heals all wounds. One day we'll be able to laugh about all this together. That wouldn't be too bad now, would it? I know Komi must starts tomorrow, but it feels like there are even more people walking the streets than usual. If I remember correctly, Dara said something about the company is not participating in Komima holding their own event over the next two days. Whatever. None of this has anything to do with me. I stop and take out my phone. The display shows the time and date, and also that I have yet to receive any emails from Lukako, as well as this cute Garo Froggy that is apparently also a cat. <laughs> she still hasn't sent me anything. I guess she really is done with me. Of course she is. I dragged her into my dumb dragon escapade and made her train for nothing. And then when she asked me if I regretted being in a relationship with her, I couldn't even give her a proper answer. It'd be more surprising if she didn't hate me at this point. You know what? I think this is for the best. Nothing good would have come out of continuing whatever it was we had. This is how it has to be. <sighs> yeah. This is how it has to be. Huh? 
Just as I'm putting my phone away, it rings. Wait, could this be... I frantically look down at the screen. An email from Shining Finger. I'm disappointed it's not from her. Wait. What am I thinking? Disappointed it's not from Lukako? What's wrong with me? I hoped it was from Lukako? Me? I was disappointed Lukako didn't contact me. No, there's no way I'd feel that way. I, I open up Mike's email and attempt to wave away my own issues. Today, you're not gonna go to the shrine, slime man. This is none of her business. She probably went there hoping to catch us doing something like that last time, but it's not gonna happen. We'll probably never be like that ever again, which means my lab members will never give us knowing looks or tease us ever again. This was all just a long-lasting illusion. Nothing more, nothing less. Another email. Hey, you should really go. I feel really bad for her. Slime man. Wait, what is this? Feel bad for her? What's she... Wait! I immediately start running, phone in hand. Needless to say, I'm headed straight for Yanabayashi Shrine. I run through waves of people. I can feel their eyes on me as I pass them, but none of that matters right now. It's over 85 degrees outside. When I finally arrive at the shrine, I'm so soaked that I look like I've been training under a waterfall. Panting heavily, I look over at the shrine. There she is. Three hundred and eleven. Three hundred and twelve. Damn! Look at go, working on your F-Smash. <laughs> now give it a Doria. Doria! Ooh, tingles. Lukako. 315. 316. Lukako's practicing her sword swings with intense focus. Her body is way more drenched in sweat than mine. 322. 312. Saving that one. And then, despite how strong she looked just a moment ago, Lukako goes limp. Huh? I can't. Lukako! I dash over without thinking. I immediately grab and hold her in my arms, just as she's about to fall. Eh? Hey, Okabe-san? Are you okay, Lukako? Are you really Okabe-san? Lukako looks at me in complete disbelief. You have to stop pushing yourself so hard. Jeez. Why are you here? Never mind that. Why are you practicing your swings? You, you told me to practice every day. I mean, yes, I did, but wait, every day? Don't tell me you were out here yesterday and the day before practicing the whole time. I, I was. We made a promise, didn't we? Plus, that's the only way I could think to prepare. I watch as Lukako's eyes begin to fill up with tears. She eventually can't hold it back anymore and breaks down. Wait, 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 wait. why are you crying? I thought, I thought you'd never come here again. Why would you think that? You, Okabe-san, you hate me now, right? I was being so selfish. I forced you to stop training for the day, even though I knew how important it was. And since you hadn't come the last few days, I thought for sure that you'd given up on me. I had no idea. I had no idea she was so worried about all of this. And on top of that, she's been practicing her swings in this hellish heat? And the reason you didn't contact me was because... I couldn't bear the idea of hearing you telling me you never wanted to see me again. Just as the tears have begun to dry up, they once again start flowing freely. This is all my fault. I'm the one who thought you'd given up on me. Me? Why would I ever do that? Well, I couldn't answer your question the other day, right? I thought that maybe... No, no, it's the opposite. I swore you were tired of me. We both had the same misunderstanding. Relieved, Lukako finally smiles. What was that just now? No, there's no way. My heart's beating fast, sure. But that's only because I ran here in a hurry. Definitely wasn't her smile that did that to me. <laughs> there's, there's no way. Um, Okabe-san? What is it? Since you're here and all, that means... Lukiko's cheeks turn bright red. That means you don't hate me or anything, right? <sighs> of, of course.
course I don't hate you. Then, uh, we are still, uh... Lukako embarrassingly struggles to find her words. It's then that I realize I'm still holding her in my arms. This is quite the sticky situation I'm in, eh? We are still... Raid buddies? <laughs> <laughs> Training partners? Lab members? <laughs> Um, Coffee besties? Okabe-san. Besties for resties. <laughs> <laughs> Help me out here. Little by little, I feel myself being drawn in by Lukako's moist eyes. L Lukako. Yes? I'm going to let go now. Yeah. Huh? Ah! The moment my hands let go, Lukako falls to the ground. She slowly stands up, rubbing her butt in pain. Ow, ow, Okabe-san, why'd you just let go of me like that? I gave you fair warning, did I not? Yes, you did, but... I can't help but smile as I watch her grumble. She smiles back, exhausted. Ah, uh, that's right. We don't have time to waste. We have to hurry. There's no time to lose. What's up? Got plans or something? What are you saying? We only have three days left to train. Train? Is she still talking about sealing away Fafnir? <sighs> Lukako, haven't you considered that this is all just bogus? What do you mean? You know that I saw a dragon. Do you actually believe me? Yes. Unflinchingly, Without yeah. second thought. <laughs> I'm really credulous. Lukako's answer is instant. That's why I've been practicing with Samidare every day. But why? Why do you... Because I believe in you, Okabe-san. If you said you saw a dragon, then that's what you saw. She... She's never stopped believing in me. Even after she thought that I'd given up on her. On the other hand, look at me. I completely lost all confidence in myself because the people around me don't believe a word I've said. Couldn't even believe in myself. I... Lukako, who am I? Eh? Hey? I'm asking, who am I? You're Okabe Rintaro. No! I am Koen Kiyoma, mad scientist, bringer of chaos into this world, and slayer of dragons. That's right. If I don't believe in myself, who will? <laughs> Lukako, my loyal disciple. Yes. We're doing it. Eh? It. We're doing it. That is the thing we are going to do. It. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? It. Yeah. Tell me how much you want to do it. Oh, I, I really want to do it. Excellent. I want to do it, too. And that's what we're going to do right now. Okay. It. Okay. We're going to seal away Fafnir. Oh. What? Oh, that's fine, too. <laughs> okay. Kyoma-san. Accept all phenomena that occur. That which has happened is everything. I once told Kurisu something along those lines. Things are decided the moment they are observed, and I am that observer. That sky-clad observer, if you will. I am now naked, apparently. <laughs> I no longer have any doubts. Even if no one else believes in me? <gasps> that's right. Lukako believes in me. And that's all that I need. I take my phone out and hold it to my ear. <laughs> yeah, it's me. No, there's, there's no cause for concern. Everything up until now? Well, <laughs> just as I start talking, the phone rings. Oh, what's up? I instinctively push the button to answer. And suddenly, I feel my vision beginning to blur. Kyoma-san? The moment I think I hear Lukaku's voice in the distance. Ah! A huge shadow covers the sky. That's it! That's the dragon! Kurusu is fucking with us? That's so good. It's so good! And so the next day... Alright! Let's keep going! Roger. <sighs> um, scary monster? Oh! Scary science monster. Makisei-san. Bingo! Next! <laughs> scary science monster! <laughs> Good thing she doesn't have a chip in my head to hear that. <laughs> and the following day. Okay, Daikon Radish is next. Be careful, it's on the verge of collapsing. Got it. 
Perfect. Now go straight up. There. Here you go. Make sure to cool it down before you eat it. <sighs> How is it? Adequate. Next. <laughs> Roger. Our intense training continued. <laughs> um, this way? No, more to the right. The right. I couldn't care less about what people think of us. No, too far. More to the left. The left. Take it back now, y'all. Perfect. Two now hops straight. This time? Seeing the dragon for a second time, I know what must be done. Just two more steps. Three. There. Swing. <gasps> Regardless of how stupid it might seem. Excellent. As long as you remember how you've swung Samadari up until now, you'll be able to do it. Just picture the watermelon at the, as the head of the dragon. Swing as hard as you can. Roger. Here. I. Go. Yeah! Luca, Luca being actually, like, quite ripped. <laughs> Sweating endlessly in the summer heat. I... I did it! I did it, Kyoma-san! I cut the watermelon in half! Hmm. Excellent work, Lukako. We spend what little time we have left training according to the book Lukako had found. Okay, all that's left is this snack. Nope, there's no need for that. Eh? But... Like I said, there's no need to try that exercise. We're doing something else. Let's go. Oh, oh, okay. I decided to skip that one exercise. And then finally, the time has arrived. The scorching month when both light and dark balance each other out. August 17th, 2010. It's finally time. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. I've done everything I could. That's what Lukuko's eyes say to me. Aren't you scared? To be honest, it still doesn't really feel like the dragon is coming. Especially because I can't see it like you can. Indeed. I'm the only human capable of seeing that horrific beast of nightmares. Which means Lukuko must do battle with an enemy unseen. But, even if I can't see it, you can. You're my eyes, Kyoma-san. <sighs> and since you're here with me... Lukako gazes straight into my eyes. I'm not afraid of anything. There's not an ounce of doubt in her. No confusion. She doesn't even look scared anymore. She's full of confidence and trust. The bond that she and I formed over the last few days. I am her eyes, and she is my body. <laughs> she is the bone of my sword. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. We have fun here. Lukako is both brave and beautiful. I nod my head to my other half. It is time to go, Lukako. Roger, let's finish this, Kyoma-san. And so we make haste to a battle that will forever go unknown in the annals of history. According to Mayuri, today should be the last day of Komima. That explains why Chuo Dori seems less crowded than usual. Not that there aren't still plenty of folks around. My white lab coat on. Lukako in her Miko outfit, equipped with the demon sword Samadare. We look ready to storm the battlefield. Fortunately, Akihabara being as it is, we don't even remotely stand out amidst the masses of people. <laughs> Lukako and I both stop at the same time and look up at the sky. Neither of us say a word. Our actions sync up thanks to the shared experiences we had over the last few days. The old scroll said the dragon would likely appear today, but it didn't say what time. The battle could begin in the afternoon or the evening. It might even be at night. What I do know is that the dragon appeared during dusk the last few times, and so I suspect that might be the case today as well, but... The sky is clear. The flying terror is nowhere to be found. But that doesn't mean it won't happen. If artificial satellites can rain from the sky on days like this, so could a dragon. All <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, we haven't figured that out and yet. Yeah. And, okay. I look at... I, <laughs> I also love how in this game we, uh, we invent time travel and then go fuck off to do other things. Oh, yeah. I look at Lukago holding Samadara and notice her hands trembling slightly. Despite what she said earlier, she's still scared. I gently place my hand on her shoulder. Ah. You'll be great. Believe in yourself. In fact, don't believe in yourself. Believe in the me that believes in you. Kyoma-san. Oh, say my name again. Kyoma-san. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Time passes as we stare up at the sky. Myself in a lab coat, Lukako holding Samadari in her Miko outfit. It's not too surprising that pedestrians stop every now and then to see what we're looking at. 
They eventually move on after seeing nothing in the sky. I've stopped caring about what's going on around me. My senses are sharpening. The only things I can see and feel are the blue sky above me and the warmth of Lukako's body. Eventually, the noise around me begins to vanish. All that's left is the pure... Interrobang? It's me. What the... I'm suddenly hit by a wave of dizziness, and then... A shadow appears. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Toma? Son? The faint shadow slowly, ever so slowly, begins to fill in with color. It's here. Eh? Fafnir's here at Heaven's Door. The portal to a parallel world, it's open. The beast lets out an ear splitting roar. Its guttural scream is loud enough to shatter windows, or at least that's how it feels to me. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. You can see it? I nod to Lukako, but this time it's different from before. It's more clear, more majestic, more evil. This is no dream, nor is it an illusion. It's really there. <gasps> I can't move. Its presence is overwhelming. The vibrations in the air jolt my skin. Just a single look into its eyes is enough to make me feel as though my blood is boiling. My body is ignoring every signal my brain sends. The hairs on my body stand up straight as my legs refuse to obey my orders. Yoma san. I. I can't do it. Seal a dragon? Me? A dragon slayer? Preposterous. How did I ever think it was possible? Faced against such an awesome and otherworldly power, how could us humans ever hope to win? I. I can't. It's impossible. There's no way we can win can't even face it head on. I just want to run away. But my legs refuse to listen to me. It roars again. Ah! Ha! Ah. All I can do is scream. All I can do is tremble in fear. The dragon's mouth slowly opens, revealing its fiery tongue. I'm going to be burned alive. Going to tear me to shreds with its razor-sharp claws? Either way, I am a goner. Please just make it quick. yoma -san, get a hold of yourself. Lukako... Tell me, what should I do? Nothing. There's nothing we can do. We never stood a chance against it. What are you talking about? We prepared for this. The only reason you can say that is because you can't see it. It's impossible. Humanity could never defeat this monster. yoma -san. For just a moment, Lukako looks as though she's about to cry. But then everything changes. I'm going to finish this. She shoots me a determined look before turning her back to me and facing the dragon. Lukako. I believe in you, Kyoma-san. You believe in me? You're the one who told me that I have the power to seal away the dragon. And so I'm going to believe in that power. There's zero doubt in her voice. There's no fear. She's like a new person to me. Her back is straight and confident. Her white clothes and black hair. Her blazing red hakama. The demon sword Samadari in her hands, Lukako is the true embodiment of the Miko of the seal. Tell me, Kyoma san, where is it? Where is the dragon? <sighs> Again, Lukako never stops teaching me new things. And I'm supposed to be the master? <laughs> Kyoma san. A little more to your right. Eh? 25 degrees to your right and 50 degrees up. Roger. I place my hands on Lukako's shoulders and face her toward the dragon. Listen, it's directly ahead of where I'm looking at. Got it? Yes. I'm no longer afraid. Its roars fall upon deaf ears. The Miko of the Seal is with me now. Take Samadare! Lukako takes her stance, swinging Samadare upward. Fafnir simultaneously opens its gaping maw. Fire begins to swirl inside of its mouth, taking shape as a blazing ball of death. One hit from it would be enough to destroy a handful of buildings. The city of Akihabara would be burnt to the ground, and who knows how many would lose their lives. Unconsciously, my hands tense up. It's bellowing roar, the intense heat that strikes us. The fireball in its mouth continues to grow larger and larger. Now, Lukako! <gasps> now is our only chance. Use every last ounce of strength in your body. Yes. And swing! Yeah. A roar, a scream, a rumble, a flash, intense heat, a heavy impact. 
Everything swirls together like some sort of chaotic orchestral piece. And then... Uh, uh, everything is normal. Kyoma-san? We... We did it. Eh? Fafnir, it's... It's gone. Then you mean I... I... Yes, you... You did it. You did it. You're amazing. You sealed away the dragon. I did it. Almost as if all the energy in her body had instantly vanished, Lukiko begins to fall down. I hurriedly catch her in my arms. <laughs> hey, hey, Lukiko! I'm sorry. I just felt tired all of a sudden. Don't be sorry. You were incredible. Really? Damn right. You're the reason we were able to seal Fafnir away. No, that's not true. What? The reason we did it is because the two of us were together. It was our power. Lukako's strength continues to fade. Wait, no! Lukako! Uh, hey, Lukako, hang in there! Panicked, I look down at her face. And then... <laughs> Sleeping Lukako, save it for the album. She's asleep. I must have lost consciousness from all that stress being released. <sighs> Jeez, she really had me worried for a second there. Mm. Lukako sleeps soundly in my arms, not a worry in the world. To be honest, I always thought her, I always thought her to be kind of a pathetic person. Weak, unreliable, brittle. But that isn't who the real Lukako is. She's a person much stronger than I could ever hope to be. In this world line, I confessed my feelings for her. I think I finally understand why. I love you. The cuckoo whispers in her sleep. I brush away the hair covering her cheeks. Her long eyelashes are moist. Her fair skin, soft cheeks, and her smooth lips. Oh my God. As if I'm being guided by her voice. Guided to her tiny lips. Mm. <sighs> huh? The small voice she lets out <laughs> in shock. <laughs> the small voice she lets out shocks me back to reality. I, just now, I... Huh? Yoma-san, I... You're awake, Lukako? I am, I... Guess you were just relieved to be done. You fell asleep. Asleep? Then what just happened was a dream? A dream? I, uh... Just had a really happy dream, Kyoma-san. You... Wait, she remembers? Huh? That dream felt super realistic. No, you've got it wrong. It was just... That was just... Uh, forget anything. In any case, save the dreams for when you're in bed. Yes, I'm sorry. Lukako adjusts her posture and bows her head. Somehow my attempt to confuse her worked. Uh, Kyoma-san? What is it? I'd really like a reward for sealing the dragon away. Is that okay? A reward? Wait, is she going to ask for a kiss? Yeah, can we hold hands? Ah, that's a relief. That's nothing! Ha ha ha! Ah, I, I'm sorry, if you don't want to, that's totally okay. I just wanted to ask. But will the cowards give us the hand-holding CG? As Lukako flails about in an attempt to erase what she had just said, I reach out with my right hand. Eh? Kyoma-san? Okabe. Eh? You're no longer my pupil. You're my partner. Her surprised expression turns into a big smile, and so... Yes, Okabe-san. Lukako firmly grabs my hand in hers, her beautiful smile shining radiantly. Oh shit, I just skipped over the credits. Lol. What? What did you just say, Christina? I said it was all just an illusion. I'm stunned as Kurosu breaks the news to me. It's yet another hot summer day. That's absurd, Bandis! I saw it with my own two eyes! There's no way in hell that was an illusion! It's all in your mind. The, the hell's your problem? You think I've just made it all up? 
I didn't say that, now did I? I was saying that you saw the dragon with your mind, not your eyes. But, uh, my mind? You see, initially I was wondering if it'd be possible to convert human memories into a pulse of sorts, and then send that to another brain. Sending memories to another brain? Wait, do you mean... Oh, you're sharper than you look. Correct. If we could use the D-mail to send our current memories to our brains in the past, we could potentially travel back in time and maintain our memories. Something similar to the time leap machine, so to speak. That's what I was trying to do anyway. Ultimately, human memories are far too large to send via D-mail. And so, the byproduct of that project... <coughs> <coughs> And so, the byproduct of that project is number 13. Number 13? Cursor was working on it before I sent that D-mail. I figure that if memories are too large to send, maybe it'd be possible to send video. I can't take full credit for the idea, though. This is all just an expansion of the VR technology research that the Neuroscience Institute was doing over at Victor Condria University. <laughs> That'll never come up again. <laughs> Basically, it converts video data into pulses. Using that, I conducted experiments with various kinds of videos. For example, take a look at this. Kursu walks into the other room and turns on the computer monitor. A video pops up on the screen. This is... It's a monster from that game Hashida's always playing. Look familiar? Isn't this what you saw in the sky? On the screen is the massive dragon, Fafnir. There is no doubt about it. It's like everything I've ever believed is falling apart before my very eyes. You were a dick! Actually, the other day I accidentally called you during the experiment. And later you said you saw a dragon, right? I'm thinking that maybe... What I saw was... You saw a video that I sent to your phone as a pulse. You know, Okabe can be a dick sometimes. This has got to be the biggest dick move. <laughs> like, no shot. Karuzu, that is the biggest dick move. <laughs> Holy shit! That's a... That's impossible! It had to have been real! It wasn't just a video! I could hear its roar and everything! You ever heard of the brain in a vat scenario? Brain in a... in a... in a vat? That's... If one were to ascend electrical impulses to a brain suspended in life-sustaining liquid, it's possible that the brain might not be able to recognize if what's happening in front of it is real or not. Which means the world we live in might not be real. You know, you see it all the time in sci-fi stories these days. So she's saying something similar happened to me? But, but, but wait, the pulse goes nowhere if the phone isn't answered, right? I don't remember ever answering any... Well, I called you three times, actually. I check my incoming call history. She's right. Three times. On the 8th, the 14th, and the 17th. These are all the times I saw the dragon. I actually come to think of it. Right before we sealed away Fafnir, Kurusu called me. <laughs> and on the 14th, the second time I saw the dragon, I just happened to have my phone in my ear. I might have accidentally accepted her call. What about the 8th? Wait, I had my phone in my ear that time, too! So the same thing happened on the second day that happened on the first? I had remembered what wallpaper we had back then, too. <laughs> That's, That's a good a touch. That's a weirdly detailed touch. All right, sure. Why didn't you tell me something so important? Well, I wasn't certain about it the first time. Plus, it was funny. Then what about the second time? You didn't show up at the lab after that. I figured the experiment was a failure. And then the third time... Can't believe this! This is how the story ends? This is so stupid! The Kukuno, I went through all that training for nothing! I feel the tension leave my body as I sink into the couch. But huh, if it felt that real to you, maybe it didn't just affect your hippocampus, but also your other Kurusu, senses. you are such a dick! I need you to understand that right now. <laughs> Chip in my head is one thing. This? Fucking with my existence like this? Yeah? You are such a <laughs> dick! I hope no one ever saves your memories <laughs> and then uploads you to like a fucking brain in a computer That's or something. That's a weirdly specific hope, huh? Yeah, because I don't want it to ever happen. Okay. Recent studies have shown that science is getting closer and closer to being able to project human sight as visual data. The same system might eventually be able to project what the mind sees as visual data too. See? Super exciting, right? I'm thinking of making the next gadget something like that. <sighs> Kurusu's beaming, but my mind is elsewhere. I suppose now is a good time as any to use Ho Renzo. Ho Renzo.
the business mantra in Japanese culture, an abbreviation of Hokoku, report, Renraku, inform, and Sodan, consult. Anybody who does business in Japan knows that. Tu -tu -ru. Oh, Okarin, what's wrong? No, things just having an existential crisis over here. And we all know how those turn out for me. If I start wearing a black lab coat in the next couple of days, you'll know something has gone <laughs> wrong. Well, it turns out that dragon of his was just an illusion, so now he's all boohoo. How are you all so blasé about this? <laughs> and so time continues to pass and the lab mems are all together again. I'm still in a state of shock from what Kurusu said to me earlier. Ha. <laughs> I didn't think he'd take it this poorly. Well, there's not much we can do about it. He was all psyched about being a dragon slayer or whatever. Hmm, Mayushi doesn't really understand, but I brought a surprise to cheer you up. What's the surprise? Come on in, don't just stand there. My emotions for someone to come into the lab. Um, hi. <sighs> Lukako. Guess Mary found Lukako outside the lab and had her come in. Oh, it's Urushibara-san. I was wondering what you meant by a surprise. What's up, Lukashi? You're a lab man, pal. You can come and go whenever you want. Um, actually, there's something I wanted to apologize about, Okabe-san. Huh? It's about the old scroll. Oh, yeah! I totally forgot about the old scroll in the book. That dragon was all just in my head. What the hell were those? That scroll was actually something my dad wrote a long time ago. Are you kidding me? Mr. Urushibara wrote that? Yeah, when my dad was younger, he loved stories about dragons and people with special powers. That's why he decided to write one himself. So those old stories and instructions were just pieces of the story he was trying to write. Then we've been cleaning up... <laughs> That explained why he'd been cleaning up his storage space lately. He probably wanted to make sure nobody would find his old work. Lukuko beat him to the punch. My body sinks even further to the couch after having the truth smashed in my face. Why did he use a scroll? He just thought it'd look cool. Ah! That's a good old-fashioned Shunivya right there. Kurasu, I require another Dr. P. <laughs> and as per our agreement, you will be handing me a lifetime supply of them. <laughs> <gasps> Luca Papa. I knew he was kind of weird, but I never saw this coming. Regardless, he and my assistant are firmly to blame here. Ah! The more I think about it, the more frustrated I get. Uh, I'm sorry, Okabe-san. <sighs> there's no need for you to apologize. Oh, that's Kurusu. Oh, there's no need for you to apologize, Urushibara-san. It's all this dummy's fault for getting so obsessed. You convinced me it was real! In the most literal way possible! <laughs> You've been fucking with my <laughs> justified true belief of the world around me! Yeah? How are you so blase about this? This whole entire thing was your fault. You know it. Mayushi doesn't really get what's going on, but I don't think it's very nice to point the finger like okay, that. Okay, but really though. Are we but, but, but really, though? Damn right. You tell him, Mayuri. <laughs> I think we can all agree that Okarin was careless, <laughs> no, okay? No! Why would you... Why would you all be like this? How is this all somehow my fault? Is it always your fault? No! I'd say it's your fault pretty often. Fair! No comment. Damn you all! Um, I was happy. Lukako begins talking as I glare at the group of traitors. Lukakun? Well, you know, even if the dragon was just an illusion, I got to spend every day with you. And that made me super happy. <sighs> Lukako. I'm honestly touched, but I prefer she didn't say that with everyone around. Ha! <laughs> They're so lovey-dovey. I'm happy for you, guy. Ugh, so jealous. See, what did I say? Lukago, how about we talk about this some other time? Um, Okabe-san, I actually had something I wanted to ask you. What is it? After we, uh, 
sealed the dragon well. After we sealed the... Is she talking about when... Uh, I'm still not really sure if it was a dream or not, so... It definitely was. Sounds like you had a weird dream. Oh, oh, oh. What's all this about? Fascinating. Details, please. Explode all normies. <laughs> I know nothing. All I can do is feign ignorance. No matter what they say, I'm going to stay quiet. No matter. Okabe reigns her out. Yes, please, a distraction. You have to be kidding me. Can you not see him in the middle of something? Wow, why so serious, friend? Oh, Urushibara Luka's here too. Perfect. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> How should I put this? <laughs> I have a bad feeling about this. I saw everything. You saw it all? Amaneshi, what'd you see? <laughs> but it was too late. <laughs> she saw it all. Oh, you mean you guys haven't had it sent to you yet? Suzaha points to her phone screen at us, and on that screen was... <laughs> I hastily snatched the phone out of her hand. Hey, what are you doing? Where did you get this? How? Like I said, it was sent to me... Oh, sorry. By Kiryu Moika. Moika? Huh? Hmm? I got an email. Oh, me too. Wait. No, this can't be. Oh my gosh. Saving it. Okarin going in. You've crossed the boundary as lesser folk have only dreamed of crossing. You're my hero. You guys are so lovey-dovey. Ah, Screw it, I'm gonna send a D-mail and... I knew it. It wasn't a dream. <sighs> well, maybe I could stick it out and see how things go. I guess this is just another choice of Stein's Gate. Help I can grow, right? Oh my god, you got it right. I've never been more hot for you <laughs> than at this exact moment. <laughs> it's Congri! Uh, whoops. <laughs> Aww. I'm not going to press the A button this time because I'm recognizing that it's fading out. Yeah. Dog, Explore all, all right. normies. New item added to tips. New ringtones added to... Oh, cool. Save the system data. Yeah, Hell let's yeah. do that. All right, we're actually a little short in this episode, so let's... Hold on, where's the tips list? We've got some e episodes of Rynet Kakaru Access, don't we? Yeah, we have quite a few. Oh, wow. Jesus keep Christ. Are there going to be... Are there going to be straight up, like, 1 through 14? I think we keep unlocking them as we go back. Oh, holy fuck. All right, so we're going to start with number five, then. Okay. Get ready for the Rynet Kakaru access power hour. Let's start with Rynet Kakaru. A couple entries up, just to make sure everyone's on the same page about <clears> what's going on. A popular manga serialized in local local comics. The third season of the anime adaptation is currently airing on Toe TV. Although the series is ostensibly aimed at children, the realistic themes depicted also appeal to adults. More and more children are learning about the internet through this anime. It has reached the point where some scholars claim that children are better informed than their parents with regard to internet issues. Some people are even calling this new generation Rynet children. Some politicians and organizations have strongly criticized the series for encouraging children to become hikokomori by idealizing boys and girls who are obsessed with computers. However, a majority of adults praise the series for, not te for teaching children about morality, copyright infringement, the possibilities of the internet, and privacy protection. This has contributed to Rynet's success. Although the series stimulates intellectual curiosity, it is not merely an educational program. Kakaru battles terrorists in cyberspace, his techniques and programs are represented by his virtual robots, while his enemies' viruses take the form of monsters. It makes the confrontations easy to visualize, with well-timed perspective changes depicting both the protagonist's techniques inside the computer and his friend's teamwork outside the computer. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sure. Okay. Mega Man Battle Network. Right? I was gonna say, it just sounds like Lane, but more action. Uh-huh. Okay. So we're gonna start with episode number five here. Okay. Uh, we'll trade off. Sound yeah. good? Yeah, sounds good. Ryan Ed Kakaru, Episode 5, A Fateful Meeting. The notorious online bank hacker, Bishop. In this day and age, online banks are the norm. With wireless networks filling the skies, there can be upwards of millions of currency flying to and fro. 
In order to keep himself from being easy to track, Bishop did all of his cracking from a moving car. Nonetheless, Kakaru was able to predict Bishop's movements time and time again, slowly but steadily closing in on the infamous Cracker. In order to stay close to their target, Kakaru and his friends used their roller shoes, dashing to hotspots and public phones to stay connected. Thanks to their teamwork and Kakaru's amazing skills, they finally managed to back Bishop into a corner. Desperate, Bishop resorted to his trump card, Ter Terios, one of the nine monster programs. In the face of such immersive, dest immense destructive power, Kakaru and his friends were left defenseless. Terios was headed straight for them. Was it the end of the road? No. Something had left out of Kakaru's PC. Kakaru's beloved virtual pet, Upa. Upa was sacrificing itself to save its master. Upa! Ryan at Kakaru, Episode 6, Upa's Dramatic Secret. Upa had received the full force of Telios's deadly attack. But not only was it completely unharmed, it had absorbed Telios itself. What? Upa had saved the day, and Kakaru had gotten his hands on one of the monster programs. Uh, but ahem. Programs. But why? Why was Upa able to absorb a monster program? <laughs> Upon being asked <laughs> about this miraculous event, <laughs> Nagaya-san replied that the infamous webmaster, Cyber Dragon, might know. Okay, I'll hold it just real quick. Just real quick. I want to just correct your pronunciation of that one word. Okay. <laughs> so, so at the end of that line there, Upa able to absorb a monster program. <laughs> program. Yeah. Program. Program. <laughs> yeah. I okay, agree. I see we're getting nowhere with this. The problem, Cyber Dragon's whereabouts and site address were completely shrouded in mystery. Oh, no. Cyber Dragon was behind seven proxies. Much like some sort of wise elder of the internet, Cyber Dragon was said to have an immense wealth of knowledge about every type of program known to man. Every type of what? Every type of program known to man. Kakeru and the others began their search for the mysterious sage in order to get their hands on the URL for Cyber Dragon's website. They'd have to complete a game. The Cyber Dragon Trial. The various typing battles and virus attacks in the game were proving to be a challenge, chipping away at Kakeru and his friend's stamina. Through the power of teamwork and friendship, they managed to persevere and eventually get their hands on the URL. The time to meet Cyber Dragon had come. As his name implied, he resembled an old and wise dragon. Kakeru showed Upa to him. According to Cyber Dragon, Upa was actually one of the nine monster programs. Kirari was worried that Upa might be dangerous, but Cyber Dragon responded by telling her that the monster programs themselves aren't inherently bad. It's all about how their user chooses to wield them. They can be both a weapon to do harm to others or a power to defend the powerless. Cyber Dragon went on to tell Kakaru and his friends that there was a process to awakening Upa as a monster program. Without knowing that process, they'd be unable to control Upa should it awaken. Kakaru and his friends said their goodbyes to Cyber Dragon, not a clue as to what their next move should be. In order to defeat the malicious programs lying in wait, Kakaru had to figure out how to activate Upa no matter what. But unbeknownst to them, rumors of Kakaru, the super <laughs> elementary school boy with the power of the monster programs, had spread like wildfire around the world. We're getting to more Digimon territory now. Yeah. This is... <laughs> also, <laughs> also, these are 22 minute episodes? Yeah. That's a lot. Is it? Yeah, that's a lot for a 22-minute episode. Is it? They literally go in and talk to a guy and then leave. No, but they have all the trials that need to happen okay. beforehand, They remember? do some trials and then they talk they to have a some guy. Tribal, they have some trials. They have to figure out where they need to go first. That's also part of it. There's a lot there. Anyway, Rynet Kakaru, ap episode number seven. A stunning aerial fist hijacked from the ground pros from all over Japan and had come together in LA to participate in the Typing Masters competition. Needless to say, Kakeru was part of that group, having become famous around the world for his crime-solving escapades. Tamara was allowed to come along as Kakeru's plus one, while Kirari utilized her family's fortune to fund her own trip. Unfortunately, the fun and games were quickly put on hold as trouble erupted. The plane's been hijacked, a flustered flight attendant informed the group. Worse yet, the culprit wasn't even aboard the plane. They were apparently remotely manipulating the main CPU of the aircraft from the ground. With the flight crew unable to switch the onboard controls to the manual, the culprit had, to complete, had complete control of the plane. Together with all 276 of its passengers, the aircraft began to descend. Without using a single explosive, the culprit had managed to hijack and gain complete control of the plane through just its circuitry. The first plane hijacked from the ground in the history of the world. The culprit's aim? Upa, the monster program in Kakaru's possession using his sub-notebook. <laughs> Kakaru attempted to figure out how the culprit broke into the system, but came up empty-handed. The single line connected to this plane was a private one from the control tower. Kakaru tried to look for any kind of clue that might help, but there was nothing. 
There were no traces of any suspicious activity found at the control tower. Kakaru and his friends had started to panic. The only signals that could reach the planet at this altitude were ones from the control tower. Kakaru continued to consider all the possibilities. It occurred to him that there was a path other... Well, there was one other path into the plane's circuits. A path through a satellite! Bingo! Kakaru's guess turned out to be correct, and he discovered a line that connected a base station on the ground to a satellite up above. It was used for overseas communications. The criminal had connected to the plane's CPU by breaking through the satellite's firewall. Not only had they hijacked a plane, they also had hijacked an entire satellite. Kakaru continued to hunt down his criminal opponent. A first in the history of the world, two Robograms engaged in battle against each other and up in space. It was over in a flash with Kakaru as the victor. While his enemy was smart, his ability to control his Robogram through his typing skills paled in comparison to Kakaru's. Though it was through a computer screen, Kakaru and his friends got their first look at space. Stunned by the beauty on display, Kakaru and his friends felt as though they were aboard a space shuttle, drifting through space. The beautiful stars twinkled in their eyes. The Typing Masters World Competition was set to begin. Ryan at Kakaru, Episode 8, Lightning Strikes, The Typing Masters Ultimate Technique. Despite the speed bumps along the way, Kakaru and his friends safely touched down at the airport in LA. Finally outside, they were impressed when they saw a young American boy help an old lady with her bags. Whoa, Americans are pretty kind, huh? There are people like that in every- I have it switched. There are people like that in every country. It took about 30 minutes to get to the LA Convention Center, the stage for this year's event. The place was buzzing with excitement, strong competitors every which way. But most surprising was the abundance of world-class hackers and crackers on the competitor list. Sly by nature, none of them had ever left a trace of their criminal activities, so they'd always been able to avoid the eyes of the law. On that list was none other than Kakaru's fated opponent, Jay. Wait, fated. I just gotta interject a quick question here. Who's the MC for an event like this? Mavis Beacon? Oh, certainly. <laughs> People getting around <laughs> at a ground computer to show off their typing skills. That's a thing. I know it is, actually. <laughs> People with mad WPM. Faded despite never having seen each other face to face. I wonder what he looks like. What if he's got crazy scars and stuff? The fiery battles at the competition were live streamed all over the world. The event itself set to rival even that of the Olympics in terms of viewership. <laughs> oh, really? The whole world was tuning in. The competition had finally entered the main stretch. The MC for the competition grooved and moved as he announced the top eight speakers over the speaker system. Top eight what's over the what system? Top eight players over the speaker system. Kakaru was the seventh competitor announced, with Jay being the last. What did the face of Kakaru's fated opponent look like? In a shocking twist, it was the same young man who had been helping the old lady at the airport. Kakaru and his friends were shocked. Just who was this mysterious boy? With Red subordinate out of the competition, Kakaru was left as the final representative for Japan. Despite their frustrations at losing, Red and his people quietly watched over Kakaru from the shadows. In the first round of the top 8 bracket, Kakaru's opponent was none other than Lost Shade, a dancer who grooved to the rhythm of the music. Needless to say, it wasn't even close. Kakaru dominated the match. He moved on to the best four, his next opponent the son of an Arabian oil king. His name, Indra Panther. Using his yoga-like flexibility, it almost appeared as though he had no joints at all. Panther's Robogram was much like his creator, moving in unpredictable ways, making it hard for Kakeru to find an opening. Kakeru managed to freeze it in place by using a special virus attack, and finished off the battle by shattering the Robogram into pieces. Onward to the finals, the showdown with Jay was at hand. Who would be victorious? <laughs> Why are these in this game? You ever think about that? Because it's awesome? Yeah, it is awesome, actually. But still, it's weird. Rynet Kakaru Episode 9, The Climactic Battle, and A New Beginning. Jade's primary attack came in the form of a ninjutsu technique known as shadow cloning. By moving at high speeds, he was able to make it look as though he had four arms. His typing technique, known as Cross Ripper, was self-taught. Jay's fame in the American underground hacking scene meant that he had a large number of followers, who idolized and wanted to copy his techniques. The name for this technique came from the cross shape his arms made while performing. Uh -huh. He does the fucking thing Futaba does in the beginning wow. of P at the P5 opening, you know, where she does the yeah. crossover thing. It's like, why would you do that? Of course, Jay wasn't the only one with self-taught techniques. Kakaru wielded the Thunder Gladiator. 
Because of the insane speeds at which Kakeru typed, an electrical current was emitted from the tips of his fingers due to the friction with the keyboard. This current gradually grew larger, eventually making it look as if Kakeru was wielding lightning itself. The battle was an even match. While the first round went to Kakeru, Jay took the second, leaving them perfectly even going into the final round. The final match, a fierce no-holds-barred battle where sparks collided. Everyone in the audience was breathless as they watched via the supersized monitor at the venue. But then suddenly, the final round was interrupted by a seemingly random blackout. If it were a simple accident, the backup generator would have kicked in. The two combatants were left with little choice. They postponed their battle. And the crowd and event staff began to panic. It was then that all the monitors in the venue flickered on, displaying a strange logo. One after another, letters began to appear. I am a monster. Are you a friend? Ha 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 ha. A muffled static voice was just barely audible alongside the creepy message. Move it, Kakaroo! Jay pushed Kakaroo away, grabbing the cord to his personal keyboard and ripping it out from the event-sponsored PC. The USB port of the PC started shooting out sparks. Jay had just barely managed to prevent Kakaroo's keyboard from being destroyed. As Kakaroo knew all too well, keyboards were the single most important thing to a <laughs> hacker, aside from their own life. <laughs> Jay had saved him. Got something you want to add? Got something you want to add to this? Thanks, Jay. Those custom keycaps cost $400. I had to do a pre-buy two years in advance. I just realized how many different anime we're referencing here because, like, the shadow cloning is a Naruto thing. And yeah. I'm pretty sure Jay is an LXP. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Huh. No need for thanks. Without you around, I have no one else to battle. Case in point. <laughs> Jay left the venue. While the competition had ended in a tie, Jay disappeared before the award ceremony. Needless to say, Kakaru turned down the championship trophy. He would settle things with Jay at the next year's competition. The mysterious young man, Jay. Who could have possibly guessed that he too would eventually wear a Rynet badge? Rynet Kakaru, Episode 10, Child of the Net, Tamaru's Love Story. Another day, another cracker defeated at the hands of Kakaru and his friends. During the battle, Tamaru had met a young girl named Ayumi over the internet. Unable to get his mind off her, Tamaru decided to find out more about her. He searched high and... <laughs> and thus Tamaru finds out about cyberstalking. <laughs> he searched high and low for her site online, but was stunned by what he found. Her site had been torn to pieces, devastated by a vicious hacking attack. In fact, it was so bad that the site couldn't even be closed down. Through Tamaru's research, he discovered that it was a troll attack utilizing a crack tool that had been uploaded to the net. An unknown number of script kitties were making trouble for everyone else. In his anger, Tamaru decided to do battle with the perpetrators, ignoring Kakeru's words of caution. He pressed on, despite how dangerous this all was, and eventually managed to take down the culprits. Ayumi's sight was fixed. Tamaru went to tell Ayumi the good news, but she was too traumatized by what had happened. In her mind, the internet was a scary, dangerous place. Why bother making another sight in a world like that? Tamaru tried to find the right words, but couldn't. However, people around the world had learned about the attack on the website and what had happened to her. Folks from all over the internet sent her words of encouragement, hope, and love. The net wasn't just a place filled with evil. It was also filled with selfless generosity and kindness. Filled with encouragement, Ayumi had decided to reopen her website. She also revealed she was a student at Kaigyo Elementary School. The two planned to meet up in person, but Tamaru was surprised to find a young boy meet waiting for him at the meeting spot. Ayumi was actually a boy who had posed as a girl online. Thus was the rise and fall of Tamaru's first love, question mark? Ooh, took a turn there at the end. <laughs> Wasn't ready for that hard swerve. Rainer Kakaru episode 11, Prince of J once more. Reports of Jay's cyber terror attacks were yet again on the rise, and although Kakaru and his team had closed in on him, they ended up on the receiving end of a counterattack. Their own programs had been frozen by a monster program called Vios. Jay began to talk to Kakaru using voice chat. Kakaru, why do you stand in my way? That's my question. Why are you doing this? Do you enjoy making others suffer that much? Jay explained that he simply wanted to test his own skills. Unbreakable security systems, data that couldn't be stolen. By testing himself against these unbreakable walls, he could measure his own capabilities. Didn't Kakaru become a net guardian because he wanted to be proud of his own power? Kakaru vehemently disagreed, but Jay simply laughed in response, calling Kakaru out on his dishonesty before leaving. 
After having heard what Jay had to say, Kakaru began to lose faith in his own reasons for becoming a net guardian. His genius, intellect, and techniques were all passed down to him from his father, and became a net guardian in order to properly use those talents. It wasn't like he had gained those abilities specifically because he wanted to be one. I am no different than Jay. Kakaru couldn't even bring himself to sit in front of a computer. His heart was in turmoil. Meanwhile, Jay's reach had already spread onto the main computer of the National Department of Transportation, granting him control over the country's traffic system. Traffic accidents began to occur, occur all across Japan, with tragic stories filling the airwaves. Kakaru couldn't bring himself to act. But then, a certain bit of news appeared before his eyes. It was about the death of a father and the little child he left behind. This incident reminded Kakaru of his own tragic past. Snapped back to his senses, Kakaru sat himself down in front of his Rynet keyboard. Kakaru vs. J had begun anew. <laughs> Rynet Kakaru, Episode 12, Upa Awakens. J unleashed monster program after monster program. Kakaru, despite having regained his fighting spirit, still had no idea how to awaken Upa. Backed into a corner, Kakaru came to a realization. The key to awakening Upa, the key was in his father's words. Don't get too caught up in your finger technique. The real power lies in the heart of the cards. <laughs> Wait, no, 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 stop this, no. Believe in the heart of the no. cards, Kakeru. <laughs> We're doing it, it's you, you too. All right, if we missed any other ones, make sure to put them in there. I'm sure there have been others. The key to awakening Upa was to upload it to a Rynet card and then create an attack type card out of it. This came with a huge risk. As far as Kakeru was concerned, taking Upa outside of his computer would be paramount to uninstalling Upa's very existence. Death, so to speak. Fortunately, the gamble paid off. Upa had awakened to its true powers. Upa's new powers were unbelievable. Kakeru and his team made short work of Jay thanks to their newfound abilities, but the shifty hacker was nonetheless able to flee at the last possible moment. A chat window appeared on Kakeru's computer. I had a blast. Frustrated by their inability to close things out, Kakeru and his friends watched as Upa returned to its cute desktop accessory form, almost as if none of this had ever happened. Cyber Dragon had seen the whole thing. He quietly watched over Kakeru and the others from afar, a proud expression on his dragon-like face. Hang in there, Kakeru. Although Jay had gotten away, Cyber Dragon could see full well how much Kakeru and his friends had grown. Just who was this Cyber Dragon? Mmm. Next episode preview. The net is still filled with hackers aiming to take control of the world for their own personal gain. Rynet's never-ending battle continues. We swear to fight and protect the order of the internet no matter what. Onwards toward a brighter future filled with hope. Uh, what's with this episode title? A female elementary school student? Rynet Kakaru, access number 13. The legendary elementary school girl hacker arrives. Will China on the scene. Until next time, dual access. Okay, so, that just was... saying this, they really need to do a game or something for Rynet Access Battlers. I'm thinking like, I'm thinking like a uh, Digimon Cyber Sleuth type thing, but also with like a little typing minigame element to it in the okay. combat. I'm guessing it'd be more of like an RTS thing than like a uh, turn-based Pokemon style combat. Maybe. Or maybe, maybe like a, maybe like a card game. Because yeah, it is a card game. It is a card game. So yeah, I'm like, imagining something like um, the Netrunner card game. Yeah, but with typing game elements, and it's a VN. It's got the VN scenes in between. Of it course, would work. yeah, it would of work course. so okay. well. They have to. Yeah, uh, hit us up if you want. We can. We can have my people talk to your people. We can work this out. <laughs> I fucking love this trash fire of an anime. <laughs> oh, y'all didn't have to sit through 20 minutes of that, but you did. But How does that did. make you feel? <laughs> See you next time. Bye. Smash, smash, smash that like, comment and subscribe, comment and subscribe.